How do you do it? <laughs> Alright guys, cheers to 10k subscribers on this channel. I am extremely grateful. I'm so happy because this was when I started I, I you know I could only dream of this. So if you guys are watching, if anybody is even watching and you want to get to know me, please leave a comment down in the comment section and I would love to get to know you guys. All right, bye. Thank you. So right now it's time for me to give back to you guys, my followers, my audience, my friends it feels like. The friends over at Aperture and I are giving away a full kit of Aperture B7C lights. It's eight practical light bulbs that can do a lot of stuff, but more on that later in the video. You can win by commenting on this video why you need a lighting kit like this. And of course, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to Aperture's channel and like this video because we're giving this away when this video hits 750 likes in one week. We managed to do it in the previous giveaway, so I'm sure you guys can do it as well. As well, as well. Practicals are lights that are present in the frame. Lights that you can see, but also can feel. You know, they're actually in the frame and not being hidden behind or sideways of the camera. Without practicals, an image looks very dull and boring. So they're quite essential to every image you shoot as a cinematographer. Practicals can be anything. They don't have to be super expensive lights. For example, these B7Cs are very nice, but you can also do it with an IKEA practical or some light source that you can find in and around the house. As long as they're in the frame and they add to the image, they're called practicals. However, the downside of cheaper practicals is that they usually have a very strong color cast. Also, they're not controllable, so less useful when you want, for example, a lower output. That's where the B7Cs come in handy, because these lights feature a regular E27 fitting for every sort of household that you can find. They're also fully dimmable, full RGB, CCT, and they're controllable via Bluetooth. So if you use more Ameren or Aperture lights in your set, you can hook them all up to Sidus Link and then nicely from behind your monitor, dial in all the lighting settings. That's pretty cool. When I walk on set, I always look for the natural path of light. And usually this comes from windows. What you often see in feature films is a wide establishing shot overlooking the entire set and the two or three actors talking or having a dialogue in that scene. You can see the windows, you can see where the light is coming from, and then suddenly, poof, the camera moves a lot closer and the light becomes softer and everything becomes more pleasant to the eye. Well, as the camera moves closer, also does the lighting rig. And of course, they emulate where the light is coming from. Now, what do you do when there is no window or when there is no outside lighting? You use practicals. For example, this shot from the film Skyfall. This is obviously shot by Roger Deakins, which probably many of you know already. And he is using the practical to be the main light source of his frame. But if you look closer, it's not actually lighting the subject. There's a lot more to it but because the light is in the frame, the audience believes that this light is creating the fall off on the face of M. So let's create this entire scene by ourselves and see what it does when we only light it with the practical and when we use the cove light as well. So as you can see, if we only light it with the practical, there's not enough light to wrap around the face. That's why we introduce an extra light source to emulate this feeling. So to make the audience believe that the practical is actually doing it, but it's not actually doing it. One thing to keep in mind is when your practical is a 3200 Kelvin, a tungsten light source, you need to create the same light quality as well. Because if your practical is 2700 Kelvin and you suddenly make your key light like 6000 Kelvin, you can clearly see that there is a separation between lights and that it's fake. And that's obviously not what you want. In this example, I used unbleached muslin. This is very basic, simple cotton fabric that you can find pretty much in every fabric store. And it's really nice because it creates a very nice color on skin tones. Of course, in this example, I use aperture lighting. In the practical behind me, you can find a B7C. And then for my cove light, I use the 600X and the 200X by Emeron. The nice thing about this is that I can sit down on my couch and just dial in the settings 
until it looks correctly. As you can see, when we cut all the cove light lights, the practical is not strong enough to do the job. Even when I crank it up all the way, it doesn't wrap around my face enough to make it believable. That's why we utilize multiple techniques to create this feeling. So to create that trust that the audience have to believe that the practical is actually doing the work. That's the beauty about cinematography. I've got a fun exercise, which we can do all together as a family. Not really, but anyway. If you're sitting on the couch tonight, I want you to put on your favorite film and pay attention to all the scenes where practicals are leading. Go on Google and check for behind the scenes photos and see what kind of extra lighting equipment they used in order to make you believe that the practical is actually doing all the work. If you found something, let me know in the comments below which scene you're talking about because I would love to know. That's it for this video. Hopefully it was informative and don't forget to compete in the giveaway. The information you need for that is in the description below. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you guys, as I already mentioned, but I truly mean it. And um, hopefully we, uh, we stick together for a long, long time. See you guys next Monday.